What's going on, my dudes? Oscar checking in with an all new video. Uh, today, I wanted to do a little bit, to do something a little different that I haven't yet done on this channel. I usually do like let's talk about, or I do why you should read, or I do my vinyl journeys, things like that. I'm always doing something different with the channel, and I kind of want to keep keep this momentum of just doing different things. And I don't know if you watched. One of the earlier videos that I made on the channel, the video that I had made was one about uh, what manga I intended to read next. And I think I read like one of those series and then and then I just never read another. I don't think I've read any other series other than the one, which I think was Die Dark, was one of the series that I, I'd said I was going to uh, be jumping on. And other than other than that, I don't think I've read any other series. And I actually sold Shibuya Goldfish, which was one of the other series that I would mentioned. I do want to still read Bio Mega, and I haven't gotten to it yet, but I will at some point. I just I have so much. I have like I just keep picking up manga, and as I talk to you now, um, I didn't. I I'd plan to kind of pick up a bunch of uh, manga and do a year or month end haul video we'll see where that ends up going because of the fact that i'd almost bought someone's whole collection of a certain classic series and i'm wondering if the seller is trustworthy or not so i have no idea if i'm actually going to get the series from them and it kind of sucks i hope i hope they ship because i i paid a ton of money like way more than i'm comfortable with to the point that i actually listed a bunch of my manga for sale just to kind of uh soften the blow I know stuff, the stuff that I'm selling right now is stuff that I don't really care all that much about. Like, I'm not really too upset about it. But what I do want to talk about today is some manga that I'm really enjoying quite a bit. And this is all stuff that I'm, for the most part, currently reading. One volume I actually uh, just finished. But I want to talk about it anyway. <laughs> so, let's do this. Here is some manga that I am currently reading. Oh, sorry, I always got to do that. I always gotta do that for, for the videos, just so I could do my my caption. So now that you've seen what I'm gonna be talking about this video. Let's get right into it. I've already wasted enough time talking about other things, but I do. I can't wait to to see what I'm doing with my year end thing. This is Pluto Volume One. I think I might. I think I might have mentioned this series in another video, maybe in my year end haul video for last year. I don't know if I bought this this year or last year. I can't even remember. But I'm in the middle of it, as you can see. There's my bookmark. I fucking love this series. Like, I've been reading it at night before going to bed. And this is what I used to do, too, when, um... Because I got into reading manga when I was, like... I think in my early 20s, like 21, somewhere on there. I didn't really get into it as a teenager like a lot of other people. Like, I would watch anime as a teenager. And, like, one of my favorite shows ever is Trigun. I even named one of my story collections... Or not a story collection, I, I named my uh, poetry collection Destroyer of July after Vash the Stampede who destroyed uh, July City. Yeah, so like I, I grew up, you know, with with manga, with anime, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've been reading Pluto and I love the series. This is actually my first Urasawa story, even, even though I have uh, 20th Century Boys on the shelf. I have, I'm still, I still need Volume 2 and uh, 21st Century Boys. But I started collecting the rest of this. I actually have... I ordered volumes 2 through 4. And then I have uh, 5 through 8. I think it's 5 through 8. In a cart. And I'll be ordering those soon. I do want to get on them before they sell out. Because once once they're out, then it's going to be impossible to even get my hands on them. Because uh, you end up with, uh, with scalpers or whatever. And then they end up charging way too much money for them. Yeah, this series is incredible. It's um, robots... What is this? This is, uh... Yeah, it's like... Robots and humans, uh... I guess, like, coexist. It, it reminded me of... Well, there's that series that just came out... That I'm assuming kind of ripped this off, which is... What is it? Vivi... Vivi whatever the fuck. <laughs> I'll put I'll put it right there. Vivi something, rather. It reminds me of, like, Violet Evergarden. But Vivi something. But this, more than anything, like, uh, Pluto reminds me of... Like, a mishmash of, like... Philip K. Dick stories. You know, like, uh... Do androids dream of electric sheep, or even like Minority Report, mixed with like uh, something by by uh, 
Isaac Asimov, like uh, I Robot or one of those one of his older stories because he was doing stuff what in like the 40s or 50s somewhere on there. But that's kind of what this reminds me of, and and it's uh. And it's just a really compelling narrative. The story is so entertaining, and I, I'm enjoying it so much. I just don't want to put it down. But I'm also trying to like keep balance with all the other things that I'm trying to get through, and you know, trying to just continue to make content so that I, I don't run out of things to talk about. And I thought it'd be cool to just do this and you know, kind of talk about things that I'm currently reading. And yeah, this is a really good one, and I really recommend it. I will do a let's talk about about this, so I won't say too much more about it here. So yeah, that's kind of I'm just gonna like do surface you know, on all of these just to kind of create some interest, but yeah, it's just, it's about robots and somebody's killing, killing, uh, like the top, what is it? Like seven robots in the world. Kind of like, it reminds me of Watchmen a little bit too. So it reminds me of like this really cool, like classic, more classical literature. It's sort of because, you know, because of Watchmen's actually a graphic novel by Alan Moore. And uh, I forgot the other guy that was also a part of it, but yeah, I definitely highly recommend the series. I uh, cannot wait to finish this first volume. I go, I 100% plan on doing a let's talk about, but I'm taking my time with it because like I really want to consume it. Like I actually like scan pages over again. You know, like I'll read a whole, I'll read like everything that happened in a page, then I'll like I'll rescan the whole page just to kind of take everything in because I think Urasawa is a fucking genius, and this is the only thing I've read from him so far. I can't wait to get into his other works as well. Next up, we got To Your Eternity. I read the first volume of the series last year, and I read it like towards the beginning of last year, be just before the anime came out. And I've only watched like the first episode of the anime, but it reminds me of like Violet Evergarden, which I just I mentioned previously in the same video. Um, this is volume four of the series. I have my bookmark in there. I'm not that far into it actually. I'm really enjoying it. I like that this isn't because I'm kind of in. I'm honestly like just over like the shonen battle shit and then funny enough one of the vault the next volume i'm going to talk about is one of those but i'm kind of over that and i like really compelling stories and this is by yoshitoki oima she did a silent voice i haven't ever read the manga and i was gonna order it but i kind of was like you know what i, I saw the movie maybe that's enough if you think that i should read the the manga please let me know in the comments and i'll i'll definitely pre-order it because i know that one of them was available for pre-order the uh the whole set or something it was like what a collector's edition but i fucking love this story so much dude it's so good i'm in the middle of the fourth volume and i know there's like a part one of this like this ends at some point and then part two takes over and then part two's not as as good i've heard it's kind of like divisive that's what i've heard um I'm not, i can't speak to that myself because i'm barely like on the fourth volume and i'm not sure like where part one ends and then where like part two takes over yeah like I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of it i think it's really well drawn like I like this owl there <laughs> it's just the characters are so well drawn and and you could tell that this author you could tell that she loves you know what she's doing and you know the story came about because uh, she'd watched her grandmother die and she wanted to kind of you know experience life I, I could be completely wrong about this but this is what i read she wanted to like kind of create a being that could grow and experience life in, in like in an alien kind of way and in a sense start to become human and this isn't nearly as depressing yet anyway as Violet Evergarden but this 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 volume has been really um, has been really getting getting the feels for me you know I'm like not that far into it but uh, I'm feeling the feels with it and yeah like I said uh this dude right here he I think that's him I think it's yeah Fushi I think that's his name uh he's gaining like more and more humanity and it's really cool just to watch his evolution and i kind of want to go back and reread just part of the first volume just like the first few pages where like you see how fushi came you know into being and he's such a just entertaining and compelling character and you know the way that he's written and the way that he's yeah the way that he's written the way that he's drawn it's just he feels so nuanced and he he's selfish too you know he's like selfish as fuck in the beginning but then he starts to kind of open up and become more open and and, and human you know and, and that's the thing you know even with you know like pluto you're able to feel empathy because of the fact that there's humanity within these these robots and and even though that he isn't human he's this thing that was created by this this out this external force like he feels 
emotion and he he's humanized and it allows you to feel empathy for him so so yeah this is a great series and i may eventually do a video about it i don't know when i can't speak to when just because like i don't know how i would go about doing it but i may eventually do a video about to your eternity mashal volume four i almost considered not even continuing the series after the third volume just because of the fact that it started to turn into like a shonen battle anime and i kind of i'm so over shonen battle anime but this theory this story is so good dude it reminds me of like this is like one punch man meets harry potter and those are two things that i really enjoy i'm a huge fan of harry potter i read all the fucking books i haven't seen all the movies which is kind of funny like i haven't watched the last two films or was it the last film yeah i think you know what i did watch a half blood prince right I watched the Half Blood Prince, and then I think I watched part one of the Deathly Hallows. Yeah, I think I watched part one of the Deathly Hallows, and then I never saw the second part. But I love the books. The books are so good, dude. Like the escalation, you know, from where it starts in part one to where it ends up in part, you know, in the last one in the Deathly Hallows, because that was just all one book. The escalation, it's like it's like DC, it's like Marvel, you know, it's like going from Marvel to, like, to fucking Snyder DC, you know what I mean? Like, it just goes from, like, really, like, chipper and bright to just extremely dark. The last, like, I remember, I think Half-Blood Prince, I think that was, that was, like, what, the sixth book it was just dark as hell, dude. It's so depressing. But it was so well written, and then the last book was just on point. And, you know, it... That's something you'd expect, like a dude with long hair <laughs> and a fucking mustache to, to praise Harry Potter. But yeah, this is incredible. I think I think those books are really extremely well written. And this reminds me of that. This like reminds me of of Harry Potter and it also reminds me of One Punch Man, which I think is a great series. It's this is like a mashup between the two. You know, this is like a uh, this is like a nice, you know, uh, convergence, a nice coalescence of those two things. And this suit has no magic at all in a world where if you don't have magic you're pretty much killed i did a video about this series uh, the first volume and i've since you know read the other two volumes and despite it being essentially you know like the same trope you always see over and over in like every fucking shonen ever it's good i i think it's good and i like that it is you know the the com the combo of harry potter and one punch man and there's also like some black clover thrown in there and there was another series that I just kind of like, that just kind of came to mind. Um, Psycho, Mob Psycho 100. There's a little bit of that in here too. So, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is, you know, where it's, I want to compare it to Don Machi. Because where it's at right now in the story, there's like, there's like an ascending thing where he has to kind of like climb levels to get to the, the top, the top, uh... The top fighter, I guess, if you will, of the school, and I'm like, uh, like a quarter of the way into it, so I haven't gotten to him, you know, fighting. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Bleach as well. So there's definitely that whole, you know, like I said, shonen thing to it. And depending on how this volume goes, I may or may not continue this series. Just gets like I'm so over the shonen battle thing, but I really did like Black Clover. Black Clover, um, I enjoy one punch man i love harry potter and mob psycho is great so you know because it reminds me of all those things i think it's like a nice amalga amalgation you know of like all these different things like i may continue it and i really like hajime komoto i really like him a lot like i think he's a great dude and i would honestly support the series just because he's he's the one who created it i just like i said i think this is like his first series and he just seems like such a genuine person so i would support it just to you know put money in his wallet we have Die Dark. I, I kind of debated about whether or not I wanted to include this in this video just because of the fact that I'm actually going to be doing a video about Die Dark pretty soon. Like the first three volumes that are available right now, I'm going to be doing a video about all of it. But I just wanted to talk about it anyway. <laughs> I want to talk about it anyway, even though I'm actually going to be doing a bigger video about Die Dark later on. I'm not really sure when exactly, but it is coming, I promise you. I just love talking about this series, dude. Like, if I could just make a whole channel talking about nothing, uh, talking about nothing other than Q Hayashida's work, you know, talk about this or even, you know, uh, Doro Hedoro. Though I do want to do another Doro Hedoro video. Like, I did a Doro Hedoro video a long fucking time ago, and like, I'll show you the panel that I'd used to make 
for the little his little video that I'd done, which was a why you should read. And it was like the first ever why you should read I'd done. And I deleted it because I deleted my whole channel. But it was like a short video, it was like five minutes and I just kinda talked about the characters and talked about the series and, and why you should read Doro Hidoro. I'm really enjoying how off the wall bonkers Kyu Hayashi does world building is. Like it's just she doesn't cease to amaze. Like she created this this whole wild world with with Doro Hidoro, which is legit one of my favorite stories that I've ever read. And I remember I used to read it when I was at work. I was uh, I used to work in this this uh, this metals factory. I work in a in a metal warehouse now, but I worked in a different place where they would weld metals. And I had like my own welding machine. And like on my breaks, in all my breaks, I would read manga on my phone. And one of the manga that I used to read on my phone was Doro Hidoro. And I got pretty far into it. I got into like whatever is considered like volume ten worth of chapters. So I ended up. I think I've talked about this before. Like I started picking up the physicals. I think as of like volume eleven was the first one that I collected and I started to just collect from 11 onward which is a really big mistake I should have just bought them from volume 1 because now I can't even get my hands on volume 2 or 3 without paying like $100 a piece and it's, it's, it's ridiculous I feel like she's really changed or grown evolved whatever as a creator and you know making this series I think it's maybe a lot easier for her now the fact that she's been able to, you know, experiment and it pays off because there's such a rabid, there's such a rabid uh, audience for her work. And this story follows uh, Zaha Senko. He's this kid right here. He's like, what, 14 years old? And then that's a friend of his named uh, Shima the Death. So he pretty much has these bones that everyone in the galaxy wants. And they are willing to do whatever it takes to get his bones. But he's like practically immortal. And he's really difficult to kill. And he's pretty much from having from living his whole life with people trying to murder him he's gotten really proficient at survival so he kills the people that are trying to kill him and he takes their bones it's just such a great series uh, i don't know if this does a great job in just kind of preparing you the like, cover for just how nonsensical the series actually is because it is like it's just wacky as fuck it's like a wacky space space it's like wacky space escapades between all these characters and there's like there's like a bunch of characters involved there's like like four i think characters and then the the ship that they're on called the moja which is uh this weird little dog that looks like it's been petrified like fry's dog in jurassic park so yeah this series is it's great dude uh, i don't want to say too much here just because like i i do want to do my video about the whole thing i'm just going to be doing it while you should read about Die Dark, so pick it up before they sell out because the first volume sold out and people were paying like thirty dollars for it. So this is a good time to jump on it. It's I think it's like teen, yeah, it's like rated teen, like fifteen plus. It's not as provocative, not nearly as uh, as heavy as Doro I, th I think it definitely is maybe more suited towards like fifteen, sixteen year olds than Doro Hidoro is. Doro Hidoro is definitely mature and up. And so yeah check it out this is the thing that i've been talking about for an eternity and it's finally gonna happen i'm in the middle of good night boom boom finally started reading this damn series there's my bookmark and i love it i love good night boom boom i have i haven't read that much of it sadly because like i'm trying to juggle like a thousand other things and like as you saw like i'm reading a bunch of other manga as well and it's kind of tough to, you know, it's kind of tough to dedicate all of my time to the series. Just because, like, I, I got really devoted to, to Urasawa's Pluto. And I've become kind of obsessed with Pluto. And I've actually been reading Pluto instead of Goodnight Boom Boom. But I'm going to jump right back into it. I need to, I, I just want to finish Pluto because I want to see what happens at the end of the first volume and then volumes three through four are probably not even going to be here until like over the weekend and so i'll have a lot of time to to kind of to jump into into good night boon boon and as soon as i'm done with this first volume i'm going to be doing a let's talk about and i honestly don't really know what i was expecting going into good night boon boon it's it's solid i love it it's so good and the drawings are incredible Inio asano has such beautiful drawings like i mean he mixes these really bizarre 
Let me pull my bookmark back in there so I don't lose my space. He mixes these really bizarre... I don't know how to describe it. Like, I love his artwork. Like, he can draw really well, but then he does, like, weird doodles. And I kind of wanted to look for a doodle. Kind of like, something like this. He does, like, like what are, like, essentially doodles. But this, even though that right there isn't doesn't do a great job of of kind of conveying, you know, what I mean by he, by him doing doodles. I'm not going to look for it, but... But yeah, he does, like, these things that look, like, really childish. And they're really, like, basic drawings. But then he mixes them within the same page, you know, mixes, like, these really basic-looking drawings in the same page with, like, these really articulate, really beautifully drawn panels. And it fucking blows my mind. You know, it kind of reminded me of this movie that I'd seen, that I saw recently by... Uh, by Wes Anderson called The French Dispatch. And there's a character in that film named Benicio del Toro who purposefully draws these really, I want to say, I don't know if I want to say Pollock esque type drawing, type like paintings, you know, where it's like really obscure, really uh, archaic, um, esoteric, you know, things that like don't make any fucking sense. But I guess if you really if you're a, an art connoisseur it'll make sense to you and you'll you'll absorb it whatever you know because it's so fucking pretentious and it's funny because even in the film they're like yeah this, this stuff is pretentious but art snobs love it and it's like and you can tell a real artist because they can draw they can draw they'll draw like something nonsensical like this like just splashing just splashing paint on a canvas but at the same time if you ask them to draw you a bird they can actually draw the bird and that's how you know that they're a true artist and th these aren't my words you know just in case somebody watches this and gets offended and thinks that i'm i'm saying these things like this is from the film and i think the beauty of it is that that i feel like Inio asano is benicio del toro in in the french dispatch where he does like these random little doodles within within goodnight boom boom but then he can actually draw extremely well and he matches the two. It's like a collage of different, you know, things within one volume. And this is like definitely like a coming of age story. And I kind of figured it was, you know, from like different, from the covers of the different um, volumes of Goodnight Boon Boon. You know, where like he's a child here, and then there's one where he's like a grown adult. There's one I think where he's like a teenager, and then yeah, and like you just see him like kind of getting older. And whenever he speaks, you know, it's always like it's always in like the the boxes, you know, like the the narrator boxes instead of like a speech bubble like everybody else gets a speech bubble but boon boon gets like a narrator box yeah this is for mature there's there's a uh, boobies <laughs> there's there's boobs and whatnot in this so it's definitely not for a younger audience but honestly i think it should be read it should be consumed at least the first volume just to uh just to kind of get an idea of what you're getting into and i'm glad that i kind of went into this not knowing anything about it so i mean even if i do my let's talk about about this series it's going to be kind of difficult to present it without giving away the series so if i do do a good uh, do do what let's talk about it's going to be it's going to be a tough one because i want to try to conserve as much of the surprise and just about i want to conserve the beauty of the story without you know saying anything that's going to ruin the experience for someone and not have them you know have my thoughts in their heads as they're they're experiencing this so yeah that'll be kind of a tricky one but yeah I, I honestly like i'm not even anywhere near done with this thing and i'm already singing its praises and so yeah that's that's it these are the books that i am well this one already already finished reading <laughs> so i'm just waiting for the next volume but these right here are books that i'm legitimately currently reading i'm also in the middle of Hell's Paradise Volume 2, though I'm reading that digitally. I have the physical copy on the way, so I might just stop reading it digitally and start, you know, reading the physical copy. And then that way I don't just buy it and then put it on my shelf because I already read it online. Um, I'm also reading, I'm also reading uh, Kaiju Number 8 on the Viz app, and I really like that series a lot, so I'm continuing to read it. And that's it. You know, that's, that's, that's all I had to say to you guys today. That's the manga that I'm reading reading red by the time this video comes out hopefully i'll have knocked some of this out and we'll be moving on to other stuff because i have so much 
stuff, so much manga to get through. Like, I have, like, over a hundred volumes of unread manga, and that's way too much. I need to start knocking this stuff out so I can keep creating content. And the next video is probably going to be a vinyl journey. I recorded it, like, two weeks ago, and I've just been sitting on it because I didn't want to release it yet because I dropped those two vinyl journeys back-to-back -back last year, and I kind of wanted to just do some manga-related stuff. But, yeah, I'll probably be dropping that after I drop this, even though that's like, I've been sitting on that for, like, two weeks. So... Thank you so much for hanging out with me. My name is Oscar. Please take care of yourselves until next time we meet. How you feel when you sipping on dripping the whip? Haters talking shit, but I stay rolling lit. Stay holding splits, man, I crave popping pills. Sluggish on the drink, bitch, I'm chugging real